When I served in Congress, special interest groups brought their talking points first. They watched how you voted, and the people who didn't like the way you voted, they didn't bother you very much. They were out trying to get you defeated. But in those days, uh, it used to be talking points first, now it's money first. We used to have smoke-filled rooms, now we have money-filled rooms. Over the last few years, particularly with the Citizens United decision, where the Supreme Court voted five to four to give corporations and labor unions the ability to dip into their corporate treasury, there's just been an exponential, a huge increase in the amount of money. And I believe that money is corroding our system. The Koch brothers, for 10 years, they've been having semi-secret meetings with the Glenn Becks and the O'Reillys of this world. And we discovered they have also been bringing Supreme Court justices twice a year uh, to their events uh, to think about changing the way people uh, perceive global warming. They've actually set up organizations to put false science together uh, to get r reports out that counter basic science on what's happening to the environment. And they can do it because uh, the two brothers uh, have a combined wealth of more than $40 billion. We don't have uh, the opportunity to have all of that false information playing itself out there. We've got to make some tough decisions on global warming and the environment. I think we're living in a very dangerous moment. Uh, my hope is that we recognize that we live in a fragile planet. When I was born in 1943, there were about two billion people on planet Earth. This year we'll pass seven billion people on planet Earth. More than half of the world's population, more than the half of all the people who ever lived on planet Earth are alive today. So I would hope uh, that we could lessen the impact of our spending on, on military and focus that on peacemaking, that we would be uh, stewards of a fragile planet and work on uh, environmental cleanup and that we would not just talk about the upper class or the middle class, but we'd recognize that the working class, the working poor also need to be helped. We are working hard to spread a good virus across the country called public financing. We installed it in Arizona, in Connecticut, and in Maine. In Connecticut in 2008, 74% of the candidates running for the state legislature used our voluntary public financing system, took no special interest money. 81% of them got elected. And for the last two years, we've had probably the best legislature in Connecticut than they've had in the past. Special interests could still lobby, but they had to lobby with their talking points and not with their checkbooks. We, the people, have to stand up, take ownership of our government, reduce the impact of money, reduce the impact of corporate interest. People have to recognize that they are the leaders we've been waiting for.